Good afternoon, I'm Mike Thompson, the Chief Operator here at the Acton Wastewater Treatment Facility. I'm going to give you a brief tour of the facility. I'm sitting at the entrance to the wastewater treatment plant, but we have Adam Street out here. That's where our collection system in town actually ends. So we right now have gravity flow from the collection system from the various homes that are on the sewer system coming into the plant. In the ground here we have storage tanks. We call them the influent storage tanks. Influent is the first uh, introduction of wastewater into the plant. We're now going to go inside and I'll show you some of the equipment used to move the wastewater and treat the wastewater in the facility. Now we're inside the facility. I mentioned outside we had those influent storage tanks. We're now just inside the building. Those tanks are beyond the wall here and we have these pumps that are going to lift the influent up into the treatment process to be filtered and screened before it'll advance further into the process. Now we're upstairs. We saw the influent pumps. This is where the discharge from those pumps reaches. What it's doing here is uh, we're measuring the flow into the facility. That's an important parameter that we have to measure. Then it goes through this, uh, what we call a step screen. That removes rags and sticks and stones from the wastewater so it won't uh, jam up equipment further downstream. And that's removed and put into a dumpster for disposal and landfill. Just after the step screen is grit removal. That's where fine particulates are removed, like uh, sand and gravel and uh, maybe coffee grounds are removed. We call that grit. We remove that as well. Then downstream from there, we add soda ash. Those are those bags of chemical here. We use that to uh, adjust our alkalinity in the, the wastewater coming into the plant. Alkalinity is important in the uh, process treatment that occurs further downstream. All right, now that the influent has been screened and had the grit removal done and soda ash added, it is now flowing out of the main building and into the heart of the operation here, which is these big tanks. We call them sequencing batch reactor tanks. There's actually two in the ground here. The uh, big covers here, there's one on each, so these, uh, these covers are kind of like the midpoint. Right now we have about 18 feet of water in this tank. Actually in both tanks there's 18 feet of water. And there's various stages of treatment going on. This is where the water gets uh, all of the dissolved pollutants, things like proteins and sugars and nutrients removed through a sequence of aeration and mixing and settling. We do all that within these tanks with the help of computer control. And then uh, we'll go downstairs and we'll take a look at some of the equipment that's used to keep this operating. All right, now we're inside again with the SBR tanks beyond this wall. So the mixing, the aeration, and all that are happening in various stages. Each tank is basically on a slightly different schedule, so we're never at the same point in each tank. One is filling while the other one's reacting. When one is done reacting, that would be all the biological processes that are taking place. Then it, the reaction ends and we settle the tank, we just let it sit quiet, no influent coming to it, no mixing, no aeration. That allows all the solids to settle out to the bottom of the tank. And then we have these pumps here that we use to what we call waste the solids that come off the bottom. So we're going to waste that stuff, some of it, only a small portion actually gets wasted out through every cycle. The majority of it stays in the tank and is resuspended and aerated and that is what is the bacteria that then treats the next feed of influent flow into the tank. So here we have the sludge tanks. We have things called decanters. I mentioned the settling. In that end, very end of the settle, all the solids have sunk to the bottom of the tank, and what remains on the surface is clear water. That's what we take off the tank. We take about a foot off. So we had 18 feet of water in there. At the end of that settle period, we're going to take one foot of the clear water off the very top of the tank through what we call a decanter. So the decanter opens for only a period of about five minutes and there's this quick flow of water into a tank below our feet here, below the slab. And that's what we call post-EQ, post-equalization tank. Post-EQ is then pumped through these pumps over here and we'll go into the other room and I'll show you what we use for further treatment on what is now decanted water coming out of the SBRs. All right, so the last we saw were the post-EQ tank pumps. 
So those uh, pumps are lifting the wastewater up just a little bit, about 10 feet, through these lines, and it's going into these tanks, which are our polishing filters. So the post-EQ, or the uh, decanted water, is very clear, but there's still some fine suspended particles in it, suspended as they're floating around, and we need to remove those as well. So we have this thing called a disc filter. Within the disc filter are these discs with cloth media on the disc, and the disc rotates around, and the water from post-EQ flows through the cloth. The solids are separated on the face of the cloth, and the clear water that went through the cloth will flow out through a weir over to UV disinfection. This is the inlet end to UV. It's flowing through this bank of lights here. There's actually four UV bulbs. They're two feet long each. And they zap, basically, the water as it goes by. UV destroys the DNA of the bacteria, pathogens that may be in the water. That way we have no residual chemical in the water. We just have a short exposure to UV light. And then what comes out, the UV channel is tested for, our key parameter is fecal coliform bacteria. So we monitor for that to make sure that the UV is effectively disinfecting the water. The flow just left the UV channel for disinfection. It's flowing into this tank below the floor here, which is actually our effluent holding tank. When that reaches a certain level, these pumps turn on. We then pump the wastewater treated at this point. It's been treated in the SBRs for all those dissolved pollutants. Nutrient removal has taken place. We've added alum in the SBRs for phosphorus removal. We've added soda ash, which helps us with nitrogen removal. So all of that's taken place within the SBRs. We've then sent it through the polishing filters to remove any fine suspended solids through UV for disinfection. It's now going through the effluent pumps and it's being pumped out side the facility to the rapid infiltration basins. The rapid infiltration basins, or ribs, are big sand beds down on Adams and High Street. Those beds receive the water flowing on the surface, and the water slowly percolates through the sand, gets filtered a little bit more, but then it goes into the groundwater for recharge. We're in the blower room of the Acton Wastewater Treatment Facility, where we have various blowers and air compressors. Air is very important in the uh, SBR process. We need to keep the air flowing to the bugs. They're actually anaero or aerobic bacteria. Aerobic means they need air. We draw air in through these blowers from outside and distribute it into the tanks. We'll also send it to our post-EQ tanks to keep the water fresh in there. And we also send air to our sludge storage tanks. So now we're in the electrical room of the treatment plant. This happens to be where we have a computer module for the, uh, what we call SCADA. SCADA allows us to control all the various aspects of the treatment plant. The SBR is really the heart of it again, and I'm looking at various equipment that's associated with the SBR. Then there are all these different uh, routes I can take to look at settings for the SBR that we can adjust to make sure that we're getting the, the right aeration, the right mixing, the right chemical feed to the SBRs. And we also can monitor all the pump stations that are, collect that are part of the collection system. That way we can uh, monitor from here. And I can also, you saw I have a tablet. I can walk around and see the same thing on my tablet. So it, that's mobile. And also I have a smartphone that can see the same information. So anywhere, basically I have an internet connection, I can see and also control. I basically have the same access to see what's going on at the plant 24 hours a day and make adjustments if necessary. If there's a, say a power outage or a piece of equipment is not operating properly, I can access SCADA and make an adjustment to run a, a backup piece of equipment. So it's very important that we measure what comes into the facility and what leaves the facility so that we know how well we're doing with treating the wastewater. There's various sample points in the process that we also are taking samples. These are a couple from the SBRs. You can see they're solid settled at the bottom, mostly clear water on top. That's what happens in the SBR if you let it sit and settle. But we'll also do, every day we're doing sampling, we're partly doing what we call process monitoring to make sure that the SBR process is working properly. And we also do permit required sampling. So we'll have to 
particularly focus on effluent to make sure that we're removing the nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen and BOD, which is a measure of the pollutant content of the wastewater. So we have a discharge permit that we're required by law to report every month how this facility is operating. And we also go over to the, uh, the ribs, the rapid infiltration beds, and monitor the groundwater around there and take samples out of the ground to make sure that the nutrient levels in the ground are very low, which they are, and that there's nothing funny or unusual going in on in the groundwater around the ribs. We have a microscope over here where we take a sample from the SBRs and we look at the micro life in the SBR to make sure that the right concentration of bugs are in there, the bacteria look right, they look happy, they're active and flourishing. So that, that way we can tell whether anything's impacted them and if we need to make adjustments if they are showing some sort of trend towards a, a place that we don't want to be. All right, so we're reaching the end of our tour. I want to thank you for joining us and hopefully you've learned something on, on this uh, walkthrough of the wastewater treatment facility. I want to also thank the town of Acton for allowing my company the opportunity to operate and maintain this facility. It's our goal to ensure the protection of public health and the environment. Thanks again.